always thankful for God's grace in your life. Oh, he hath made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture. Psalms 100 says it so beautifully. It starts off by saying, enter into his gates. No, that's not how it starts. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Verse 2, please. Serve the Lord with sadness. Serve the Lord feeling sorry for yourself. Serve the Lord thinking God's not fair. Serve the Lord serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that hath made us not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture enter 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 into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I'll bet there's another verse there. Thank you. For the Lord is good. Put your belly in. truth endureth for all generations. Oh, we got a lot to praise him for. You've got a lot to praise him for. You're not on your deathbed. You got food in your belly. You got clothes on your back. Oh, your life may not be perfect. As a matter of fact, your life isn't perfect. There's no one is. some struggles, we have some trials, but the joy of the Lord should supersede whatever struggles we're going through. Amen? I just want you to shake two people's hands right now. We're going to greet each other uh, more enthusiastically. Everybody clap your hands. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
her family to you, God, right now. We surround them with your comfort, your peace, God. Hold them close to your bosom, God. Oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Help these people, God, that are suffering because of these tornadoes, God, from loss of family members, Lord, from losing their possessions, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, I thank you for your spirit going there, God, pouring out upon these people, these families, our churches in Alabama, God. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, come alongside these people that are hurting, Father. We thank you for that right now. We know you're doing it, God. We believe, God, that you're doing it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of our Jesus. We thank you for walking with us, God. We thank you for holding us up, God, in times of need and struggle, God. We thank you for your provision, God. We thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for being a holy and righteous. Hallelujah, God, that cares about his people. Praise God. Supply and need, Lord, in this place, God. We believe, Lord. We believe, God, in your miracle working power, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of our God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are amazing. You are awesome. 
We don't like ourselves very much. Can anybody relate to that? There's some things about myself I hate. Not much, mind you, but a couple of things. <laughs> There's things about me I just dis detest. And somehow I translate that into some kind of con self con or uh, subconscious feeling that God kind of detests me also. But as I recall, you weren't a very perfect son. <laughs> but I never detested you. Because love looks past flaws and sees needs. <laughs> when I saw you as a, as a son, a boy, a little boy, I saw your flaws. Some, we can't really hide them. You know, they come out. But I never detested you. Your flaws showed me where your needs were. Like when we would study those spelling words over and over again. Remember that? Okay, Dad. We've done it, Dad. We've done it. I know, let's go over it again. 50 words you had to learn how to spell. And so when I saw flaws, that made me see needs. So when God looks at you, He's not detesting you. He's not sick about you. He sees your needs. Then He wants you to submit, to let him love you with all your flaws. And when you let him do that, you come away with healing. And I think, are y'all with me? Is this making any sense? I really think that sometimes we kind of keep a little distance because we know how not perfect we are. But he wants us to submit and let him love us. And love him while he's loving us. And be comfortable. And he's not angry with your flaws. He wants to help you overcome those flaws. We need a revelation of how much he loves us. To what lengths would I go to help you? I don't know. Let's not find out. But I think I would go the distance to help you. I think that's how he feels. He already did go the distance. He went all the way to Calvary. Because he cherishes you. I'd like you to go, uh, Tony, to the scripture I gave you in Hebrews chapter 12. I believe it's verse 2, and I'd like to see it in the Amplified as quick as you can. Hebrews 12 verse 2. I think it's 2. It might be 3. And then I'll get out of the way here and we'll keep moving on. Um, we're told here to look away from all that will distract us to Jesus. When we're looking at things that distract us, we should look away from that so we can keep focus. Keep our eyes on it. And it says, who, speaking of Jesus, who is the leader and source of our faith? He, he's our leader and our source. We, we need him. Giving the first incentive for our belief. God gave us incentive when we first believed. Read this with me. He, you read 
good with me? Ready? He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, he endured the cross. Now, quiz. What was the prize? He was able to endure what he went through on the cross because of a prize that was set before him. This is what you're going to get when you endure this. What was the prize? you know what the prize was? You. Which begs the question that the psalmist asked, which is the first verse that I gave you in the office, Tony, where the psalmist said, what is man? You remember? It's in Psalms. What is man that thou art mindful of him? How come you keep checking up on me? Why do you care? What's in me you like so much? Why do you consider me a prize? I don't think you're getting much of a prize. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? It's perplexing, isn't it? Like when I told you just a second ago you were the prize, I'm sure there was people that just couldn't wrap around that. Because it's hard to think of us as a prize because people have treated us like we were a sewer. And no value. Mystery. So we've sort of taken in this kind of negative view of ourselves. But God doesn't see us as negative. He sees us as a prize. So we scratch our heads and, says, and say, what is man that thou art mindful? What, what is he saying there? He sees what you can become. When your kids were babies, you, you probably were, was he, or was, was Chris Goo Goo and Gaga about the kids when they were born? Has that been a fool? What did you see in them that was so awesome? Don't answer it, you'll get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what you were seeing was a lot of diapers that needed to be changed in, and hassle and work and, you know, but really, you saw more than that. As you said, he saw himself. That's a scary thought. But, you know, he sees himself, you know? And all the work and all the putting up with this and all is worth it because we're his kids. His pride. And he was willing to go to a cross because that's how much he prized you. It was worth it. And he wants you to submit to letting him love you. He wants you to get it. I want you to feel it. You feel it in the I can tell you are. And that's all. Because we know we're not worthy. But he loves us in That's why we sing how great is our
He wants you to walk away feeling, can I believe God loves me like that? But he wants you to believe. Because he wants you to feel secure in him. He's not going to turn on you. He's not going to disappear like others have done. He's in there for the long haul. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. For all to see how great, how great. Would you close your eyes and sing it right to me? Is our God.
myself away, relinquishing. Relinquishing control and giving God control. Letting God control. Surrendering my control and submitting it to his Instead of me being the boss, he's the boss. I can make him bigger in my life if I can get smaller. John the Baptist said, I must decrease. He must decrease. Hallelujah. Anybody happy in the Lord here today? Living for God isn't about trying to find the minimums that we have to do to please Him. It's searching for the maximums. There's a trend in our world that wants to minimize the daily minimum requirements. What can I still have or do and still be saved? That's looking in the wrong direction. How about, what can I do? How much can I give? How committed can I become to maximize my relationship with God? Because if you ride a fence, you're going to fall off the wrong side somewhere along the line. I'm just glad for God's shepherding in our lives. His shepherding. And he is a good shepherd. Well, Psalms 47 and 1 gives us a little hint on how we should give praise to God. It says, oh. Right? Remember, we know what oh means. How many remember what oh means? Oh. Oh means passion. Uh, death. Oh.